These are the tools that you're going to need. The first thing that you're going to want to do is remove the top to the pop can. You're going to need this pop can popper because it is exactly one inch long and you can use this to do your measurements. The center hole the one that you grab with your finger and thumb is exactly a quarter inch wide on the inside dimension. Continue marking all the way around the can until you have 32 equal divisions. For this next step you're going to need something like a safety pin, a nail, or something pointed like a corkscrew or an awl that comes on your handy dandy Swiss Army knife. You're going to need this to poke holes where you have marked your 32 lines around the can. The nail is pointing at the location in the vertical dimension where you're going to want to poke the holes. The next step is to mark the can exactly one inch above a flat surface using the pop top. Once you've completed that, what you need to do is grab the top top of the pop can and hold your sharpie very steadily at that exact position and at the same time spin the can without moving the position of that sharpie. Mark can all the way around and keep in mind this does not have to be perfect it's just a 50 cent pop can. Mark one inch all the way around the pop can just like so. Next flip the pop can over and we will begin to mark the upper section of the pop can stove. First do the same thing we did before mark one inch on the pop can above a flat surface. Then tip the can on its side and slide the pop can popper up so that this inside dimension here which is one quarter inch exactly is roughly lined up with your first mark and then mark the can a second time approximately a quarter inch above that first mark. This dimension here should now be approximately one and one quarter inches. Now what we'll do is we'll flip the can back onto its top and we will hold our sharpie as secure as we can at that second marking. One and one quarter inches up from one, a flat surface and we'll spin the pop can again 360 degrees trying to maintain steadiness with our hand that's holding our marker just like so. Now what we'll do is we'll flip the can onto its side again take our pop top and we'll line it up with the lower dimension. We'll take our sharpie and we'll make a mark. This mark is one inches from this line. Then what we'll do is we'll move that pop top up and we'll make a second mark. 
and then we'll move it up one more time and make a third mark. This dimension from this third mark to this line here to here should be approximately one and one half inches. Okay, you know the drill by now. Hold your sharpie as steady as you can and spin the pop can marking all the way around. Once you have your can marked, all you have to do is begin cutting along the marks. Start by piercing a beginning hole through the can at the location that you're not going to use. This section is going to be for scrap. This section from here to here is scrap. So don't worry about any kind of mistakes that you make in cutting there. Once you have that hole made, it's really easy to just begin cutting the can. Cut along the lines and continue all the way around. like so. Maybe you got your top section and you still have to cut this section. We'll get to that in a second. It's a good idea to take your scissors and cut along this edge a final cut and make sure that there's no jagged edges on there so that it's nice and smooth. Then what you can do is take this and sort of fit it along the bottom side sort of work out any creases that have caused from the scissors. Sort of go like that until, until you get it all smooth. I like to take this tab on the inside and push it in up against the top of the can. That way it's out of the way. Once you have the top of the stove separated, continue cutting the can along the marks. Careful not to cut yourself on the sharp edges of this metal because they are sharp. like so. Okay, now we're going to separate out the middle section of the stove from the bottom of the stove. We do that by first cutting straight down perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to our markings and stop at this bottom marking. Just like that. Then very carefully cut along this line 
until you have the bottom of the stove separated out of the can. careful not to cut yourself on the sharp edges of this metal. It's sharp and it will cut. You can trim up this edge if you like. Make it nice and perfect if you want. The bottom of the stove, top of the stove, and this will be the center or middle section of the stove. This middle section, what you're going to want to do, is you're going to want to take this and overlap it and fit it inside of here along this lip. There's a lip on the inside of there. You're going to want to fit it into that. So that it fits snugly. and then mark it. Mark it with the scissors. This should also fit around this, just like so. And where you've marked this, you're going to want to take your scissors and cut halfway cut halfway up and do the same thing on the opposite side just like so then what you do is fit it together Just, just like that. There's the center section. Notch the center section a couple, three times. And then just take and bend over like that. What this will do is this will allow the fuel to run from the center of the can towards the outside edge of the can and then up through to your pinholes. Once you have all the components cut, it's just a matter of assembly. Take the middle section with the notches down and place it into the lower half of the pop can stove and then take the upper section and slip it over the lower section this can be a little tricky and may take some time so have patience Press the top and bottom of the can together, checking periodically that that middle section is in that groove right there. And it is. Press the can together. Until you get it secure. And that's it. You have just built yourself an Eagle Scout pop can stove.